everyone and everyone who's used to coming to Pure Talks, you'll see Al getting very close to the uh, camera there. <laughs> He wanted to get his close up in early. So I'm this yeah. evening with Al Perez, who is a recording artist with Warrior Records and Jim Irvin. And Jim has asked me to have a chat with Al and came on about 10 minutes ago. And we already started chatting. I was like, no, Al, we've got to stop because people are missing all the good stuff. He's already told me about <laughs> his, his girlfriend called Cara. <laughs> yeah, we know things. You know things about. Well, I already know stuff about you. <laughs> I so like I, we need to go back to the beginning. <laughs> okay. So tell me about little Al. Tell me about Al growing up. Okay. Uh, so uh, I grew up in uh, Long Beach, California, which is a, a suburb of Los Angeles. Nice. So I grew up in. Um, you know, a, a very, what we call the vadio or, you know, a rough neighborhood, if you will. And, um, you know, we were, uh, I'm, I'm first generation, I'm a, I'm a Mexican American and I grew up in kind of a beach town. And so, but in the rough crappy part, not the fancy, we lived in a mansion part. Um, and, you know, I was super into my family played music. I loved music and we wanted to be surfers and, and rock stars. That's kind of, we were going to break the mold of being part of the whole gang scene and all. So my brother and I, well, I have a brother that plays music with me and we're one year apart. And we look so much alike that if he saw, if he was sitting next to me, he'd ask me, are you twins? We get it all the time. Oh, hang on a minute. So am I speaking to Al? Mm. Yeah. Uh, well, if I can't you make it, I just have him sit in. Place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He does that to me. When we were younger, we used to play that game, but that's a whole different story. Um, I don't think we need yeah. to go there. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're the world. But, I, you know, I grew up in California, and um, I played music when I was young, and my my aunts, my uncles, my grandfather, everybody played some form of music. Um, I, you know, I was raised by a single mom, and I got in a little trouble, and my grandmother kind of rescued me, and that's how I – I live in Vancouver, Washington, not Vancouver – Canada, BC. I live in Vancouver, Washington, which is right across the river from Portland, Oregon. I always try to tell people because they, they're always confused. They always, if I say Vancouver, they think I'm from Canada. And I've had uh, articles written about me about being from Canada. I'm like, oh, no, I'm from Vancouver, Washington State, USA. A anyway, so, you know, I, I, I went to college in Seattle and uh, played music and changed my life. And I'm um, just always have played and written music my whole life. And uh, I've been fortunate to play with my brother, Roy Perez. We call him the Ripper because he plays electric guitar. And, uh, you know, I've played with a lot of friends over the years and I've done studio albums and done tons and tons of performances all over from just everywhere. I mean, all of different countries, different. I like to take uh, uh, shows that are on uh, tropical islands because I get to be on a tropical island. <laughs> So I've done like Aruba, Jamaica, those type of places because those are fun and plus you get to lay around in the sun. That's always good. I Hawaii. Was say, you're you're a boy from the south, you know. You like the sun, so you know I don't hate the rain. I know that I I really <laughs> I recently went to London. I, I just about three weeks ago I was in London and I did a two week tour over there and I had never been there. But people always ask me, why have you never come? And I said because you have the same weather as we have in the Pacific Northwest where I live. It rains a lot. And so uh, I always want to go somewhere sunny. So it wasn't anything about going to the UK or London. It was that I wanted to go, I always want to go where it's sunny because I live in a climate that's, that's, we get, you know, a solid, if I say six months of rain, I think I'm being nice about it, but we get a lot of rain. <laughs> we have a very rainy so when season. you were in London, because it's been really nice here. We've had, it was super nice. It was cold. And not raining at all. We get a bad press. I, you know what? I'm going to say two things on here in, in your in, in UK London's defense. The rap is you guys have terrible weather. That didn't happen to me. It was cold, but it was sunny and beautiful the whole time I was there. Secondly, that your food is bland and terrible. And I said, you guys are all out of your minds. You're not eating at the right places because okay. I obviously am a full figure man and I like to eat. And I didn't have any problem finding great food in London at all. It was everywhere. So everybody, I, I'm not to kid me. I, in fact, I did a show this weekend and they all, a lot of people have followed me on Instagram and all the different sites. And they said, how was the food? Number one question. I said, 
you guys are all wrong. There is great food in the UK. I mean, you, you guys, you, don't get me wrong. There is some traditional stuff that's a little plainer, and they will eat beans with their breakfast. But other than that, that I that I, that I found, look, we like some chili flakes on those beans if you don't yeah. mind. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, again, I'm Mexican, so I will eat beans with breakfast. But, you know, in, in the traditional American breakfast, there is not beans involved uh, in, in that. But and so I, I found it I found it amazing. I, I had you have amazing food in you the have UK. amazing food. And I'll tell you what, you guys win for pastries. I'm. Oh, yeah. Good. Oh, yeah. I, I like my pastries. And oh, my God, I, I came back and said. I don't know what the people in London or the British people know, but they know how to bake. I swear <laughs> to goodness. Do. Oh my God. I, everywhere I went, I was like, oh my, can I get lemon cake? Can I get, the, I'm like, wow, this is. And, did you have and, afternoon I, tea? Did you have an afternoon, afternoon tea? I did. And I love tea. And in fact, I brought my friends back tea from uh, London uh, because that seems like the thing to do, you know. Uh, so, and did my you mother, go to Fortnum and Mason? I don't remember. We went to so many places and I was fortunate to, uh, we, we did a tour guide. We did, the, we did a tourist thing and hired a tour guide who took us to all the traditional, you know, we went to the museums and we went to Abbey Road and, you know, and all, all, all the things you got to do the first time. I don't need to do it again. Like I will never have to take another picture inside of a, a fo- uh, you know, a, 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 a UK, the phone booth, the European phone booth. <laughs> that you have. But you know, to us, that's a big picture. Everybody laughed at me like, "Oh, you had to do the phone booth picture." I'm like, it had to happen, and I had to walk across <laughs> Abbey Road, and I had to be in front of a, you know, an, an old church. Did you get one with a the- policeman. Uh, I didn't do the policeman thing. I, I I thought about it, and you know, in front of the palace, of course, I was <laughs> exactly. There and, you know, I had to do all the tradition. But I was telling everybody, I said. Now that that's done, though, when I go, because I'm going to come back and tour again in the fall, I said, I don't have to do any of those things, you know. Um, so I'm going to have to write you, I'm going to have to write you an itinerary for when you come back, because well, they're we'll just honestly. catch up with me and we'll go to dinner. Yeah. I told you, again, I like food, <laughs> it's and, food. and I, I'll buy. Well, we can go to dinner. In fact, Excellent. some of the other people, I know some really good places. Well, you pick, I'll buy. I'm in. Let's go. Perfect. I love it. You heard it here on here, folks. You heard it. I'll do it. And normally, I don't like to scare you, but normally I have an entourage with me. <laughs> That's okay. There's you normally know what? quite I... a few people. It's, it's okay. You know what we did last, when I came up to, uh, because I had uh, the, the album producer come with me. My brother was with me. I had a piano player with me. I had a couple friends that came. To... We actually had an entourage. It was kind of funny because I, when I told people I was going to go do the tour, I had friends that said, do you mind if we go with you? I'm like, I don't care. Let's all go. Yeah. That's so rock and roll to show up with your own entourage oh, in America. Gosh. Come on. This is cool. <laughs> right. I'll bring my entourage and you bring your entourage and we'll go out to dinner. And we'll have our people call your people and your I'll people have... call my people exactly. and we'll put it all together. I love it. Exactly. I'll get <laughs> my people calling your people and we will make sure this happens. Because honestly, food, the I because my um brother-in-law and sister-in-law live in just outside New York. Okay. And yeah, this okay. whole bag about the weather's always terrible. It's always great. Rubbish. Yeah. It, it rubbish. is. It was absolutely gorgeous the whole time. I had a, I think we had half, it, 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 we were there for what, uh, 15 days. I think we had half a day of rain one day. Otherwise, it was just normal winter. Was just washing. Cold. Yeah. It was rain. It was fine. Yeah, it was, was fine. Just, we had to wash. We had to do a bit of street washing that day. I, I totally get it. Uh, interesting thing I didn't know about London. You guys have foxes. We do. I've got a dog as well. Look, I just see your dog. But I, I thought about it because I saw your dog. I'm like, I said, I'm, we're, we're in a cab, and I'm like, is yeah. that a fox? Why is it? Because we don't see. Fo- I mean, I've seen foxes in the wilderness. I've never seen one. And we have, we have coyotes. So we have like coyotes. That, like you have foxes there. We have coyotes in our city. Yeah, urban foxes is you know massive. We have lots of because um, after the fox hunting ban, and I'm sure you're aware of all of that. Um, it's quite controversial, but once that happened, then obviously there's a lot more foxes out in the world. But actually, when you come out of London, because obviously you stayed right in the center mm-hmm. of London, when you come out of London, you've got deer, you know, oh, yeah. Yeah, what wildlife is happening here? That's I get You're it. You're gonna I, see uh, it all. We we saw a lot of things. We were, you know, what we we saw some great historical, we, we don't have old buildings like you have there. Yeah. 
So the you know the, the the architecture of everything is just is wonderful. I, I love. We have it an amazing music heritage as well, as you oh. as you alluded to with going to ba um, Abbey Road, and then you told me before. Um, sorry, I'm just picking the dog up so he can That's join okay. us. Um, you alluded to going to Brixton and playing yes. some of the um, venues, and we have an amazing music heritage here with amazing venues all around London and all around the UK. I, I agree with you. In fact, one of the things I was bragging about this weekend when I was playing a show here uh, in Northwest was what great audiences you have there. You, you the, the people in, in Europe love music and they love original music and they're so attentive and it's such a pleasure you know, when you go, well, for me, as, a, as an original artist, it's not to say I, I, I don't do a cover of other people's stuff here or there, but primarily, I, I if you look behind me, all these albums are all albums that I've written over the years. Mm -hmm. There's more of them around my studio here. Um, you always wonder, how is that going to go over? How are, what's the audience like? You know, are they going to be, are they going to want me to do uh, a cover of something traditional that they'll be familiar with? Or are they going to be really into it? Not true at all. I did not play one cover in the UK. At any club I played, everywhere I played, all because I was prepared to do it. I said, I even told the guys, I said, hey, if we lose them a little, we might have to snap out, you know, some big cover that they're going to bring them back. Because I'll just say it, I can sing my ass off. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a vocalist. I have a big old school voice. I know how to sing. And I said, so if I have to grab them, I might have to throw out a cover tune of, of something. And they go, what do you want to do? I'm like, I don't know. I mean, should we do an old rock tune? Should we do something um, very American, like one of the big songwriters from here? I said, well, we don't. We, but we're all seasoned musicians, so we could. I could call just about anything, and we could probably do it. Uh, but I didn't have to do that. It, it, the audience were great there. I loved it. So I came home and I kind of, I've been really bragging about it. So a lot of fellow musicians are like, well, how did you put it together? I'm like, well, I said, well, first of all, you have to have a record. Yeah. <laughs> and then and if that's doing well and getting lots of play, and then of course your label picks up, but then they put things, it's, it's, so it's not just go and play. There has to be something behind it, but um, great audiences. I had so much fun. I, we're going to come back in the fall. That's, yeah, the, it's already we'll kind of in the works. The UK, as I say, got amazing music heritage. But I think we all grow up, um, you know, literally from like 13, 14, we're being taken to gigs by our parents and, right. you know, grassroots as well. And there's a massive music festival scene here in the summer right. where, you know, parents, again, take their kids, you know, young kids going to massive music, Astonbury and all the big, you know, the ones up in mm -hmm. London in Hyde Park. And... I think it, it is ingrained in us. And we have amazing radio stations as well. So they're playing, you know, music pretty much all around you all the time. And as you say, that means that you get, you know, if you've got a popular record and people have been, you know, especially mm -hmm. something that, you know, you're jazz. We love, well, we you love know what? I don't really, jazz. I, I, people call it jazz. I, 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 I don't. I don't call it jazz because I think that jazz people get to des deserve a lot more respect than I. <laughs> I, I think you could have a little bit of a jazzy R and B vibe to it, mm -hmm. um, but traditional jazz to me is so on a different level because those players are so amazing. Um, it, it definitely has a lot of it's. It would definitely say a hybrid of a lot of influences from jazz to Motown to a little R&B you know it definitely you can feel all those different types of even even a little rock you know I, I you you talk about going to concerts there and uh, as a very young child you know my first concert ever are you ready for it you're gonna be surprised what it was I was 11 I was at Black Sabbath I wow. saw Black Sabbath at 11 years old um with with a guitar so me and my brother my brother's one year older he was 12 I was 11 and a guitar teacher we have no idea why he gave us beer and took us to a rock concert, but he did. And that's a real story. And uh, I joke about it now. I'm like, who that's their kid? And what were we doing at a Black Sabbath concert? And uh, But you know what? I'm a big fan of Black Ozzy. Ozzy is, you know, people always are surprised when I say, what is some uh, musical influence that you write? I said, I think Ozzy was an awesome lyricist. I think as a writer, he really is overlooked. I, I mean, he of course, he's huge and he has platinum albums and Grammys and all that. But people talk about him as a writer. And I'm like, I lived by his words growing up. I loved all the old Black Sabbath stuff. And then, of course, his solo career. And people are really shocked to find it. They go, well, 
you don't sound nothing like that. I said, well, no, I don't. But I grew up on rock music. And then I grew up on, and I had a, a stepdad that was a big band musician. So I had that kind of influence of, of big music. And then, of course, then you kind of have your own, your family members are into Motown or somebody's into this. And, and I just liked all types of music. And I think in, in over the years and out my age, I, I think music is just, it evolves to be for yourself as an artist, whatever it's going to become. It's just going to naturally. And now um, I, I don't think about what genre am I in or or what kind of vibe is it going to have when I go to the studio. It, it just organically becomes what it is. And, and this album, um, you know, again, I'm, I'm not 20 anymore. And to do an album now that's doing well and to get the kind of response we've got, um, but I really approached it that I thought I'm whatever the songs are, we're going to let them be. We're not going to try to do this overproduction thing or force them into a category that these are going to be jazz or these are going to be R and B or these are going to be light rock or whatever. Let's just, let's just go play music and see what, let it be more organic than that, which is the first time I've done that. And the result was awesome. You know, it was, it was really fun to do an album like that because it was, uh, and the labels respond, you know, they, they loved it and everybody's been picking up on it and it's, it's, it's a lot of fun when it's doing well. <laughs> yeah, it's, everything's always fun when it's going well, isn't it? Go back a little bit. When when you write, so you're saying, you know, you do a lot with your brother. When you're writing, mm -hmm. do you write with your brother? Do you go and sit in a particular place or do you just mm -hmm. like chill and vibe and see what happens? You know what? I write, I, I'm going to sound really artsy and cliche. I think of music lyrics all the time. Things... I don't write with anybody. If, if I write with somebody, typically it might be something, a musical idea that they have on an instrument. Like, for instance, if my brother had a guitar idea or a riff that he had going, or if I'm sitting with a piano friend that's playing, but I also play piano, and uh, he's playing something, I might go, hey, that's interesting. What's that about? And 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 write. But I, I almost always write 100% of the lyrics. I don't really um, work with anybody on that because, uh, well, I, I just, they're, I call them little, well, I'll say, I'll date myself. They're little Polaroid snapshots of, of little times or pieces that I'm thinking about. And I kind of think about if I had a pull or, or uh, I say Polaroid, that's just for us people that are old enough to know what that is. Um, a, a picture. It's quite trendy now. I think you'll find that most people know what you're talking about. You know, about. You're, you're, you're right. My daughters, I, I I, I, a couple of Christmas, uh, last Christmas, I guess it was, they asked me for, um, yeah. they go, they call them something else though, but they were just Polaroid cameras. Yeah, they're like these said, Instagram things, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, what the hell do you want? They said, this camera, and, and, and the picture just comes out. I'm like, a Polaroid camera? <laughs> like, I, I, really? I said, okay. After all that, we went all the way to digital and now we're coming all the way back. Oh, oh Okay. And uh, but but music is to me is a little snapshot, just a little uh, you know whether I see somebody uh, emotionally acting a certain way or something invokes me because it looks a certain way or um, I, I I I I just love writing I, all the time. I mean um, I probably have three to five songs going at any given time. Um, I was over at a studio in London uh, with uh, Santi, I, Santi Abel, I can't remember his last name, but he works out of the studio that used to be the guys from um, Gang of Four. Uh -huh. um, so it's right downtown. It's like the only studio that's actually downtown. And I'm, I'm going to write with him on something of his track. And, and um, they've asked me to, well, we're talking about doing a, an album live from London, which I would love to do. I said, oh, that's so cool. Goes, I said, I'm in because I have so many albums and so many songs. And plus I can, write, I have so many uh, new songs. I said, we can record a bunch of the old stuff. Uh, we can bring in the new album stuff. We can then add some news material and do a live album. Uh, that would be great. Tell me who's paying for it. I'm in. <laughs> yeah, I'll do it coming? tomorrow. Yeah. Always where the money's coming from. Um, so you, you don't ever suffer with writer's block or anything like that then? No, you know what? When I was younger, um, when, and I mean younger in my 20s, I know I'm only 30 now, but let's just yeah. go. Uh, 25, what, yeah. <laughs> yeah. In my mind. I, well, how do we say this? I identify as a 25-year-old. <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, you know, I, I, when I wake up in the morning and my knee hurts and, I'm, you know, I'm cricket and crackling out of the bed, I know I'm much slower than that. But I love to write. I used to work. I would write professionally for um, um 
young artist. So I figured out really quick that every people could sing, but not everybody can write. And um, so to make some money, I would go around to all the vocal coaches and um, and tell them if you have people you're working with. And so usually vocal coaches are working with you know, uh, young, young people, um, 10 to 15, and their parents are trying to, you know, have this idea that their kids get, anyway, I would write for them. And so I would write any kind of song, Christian song, rock song, country song, it didn't matter to me. And I had, and I would keep the publishing and I would write these songs. And um, it was kind of fun for a while. Uh, but it's a, a lot of work when you're working on that and your own stuff. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, if you said, let's write a song about this, and you gave me a week, I could probably have a song about that in a week, for sure. Yeah, which the trick is, sadly, yeah. I wouldn't. Do, do you play music? I take a lifetime. <laughs> you know what? I learned to play the piano, I learned to play the guitar when I was growing up, but I, yeah, I didn't, I, it wasn't something I pursued. And the, and I think it's because you said early on, it was a massive influence in your household. There were lots of people playing music in your household. And I was the only person playing music in my house. Ah. So well, I listen. love music and I love playing music, but I was the only, I was the lone person. And you, and I think there are people like that, aren't there, who, mm. you know, they were the first one. But I think generally when I talk to people and I interview them, you find that there's an environment that nurtures that kind of person. Well, you know, I was raised by a single mom. So let me reverse that picture a little bit. I was raised in an apartment, with, which is a flat to you, uh, uh, but was a single mom that we were very poor. You know, my, my family was around and, and people did play, but it wasn't organized. And we didn't grow up in some house where there was music happening. Later, my mom married and, of course, a stepdad that was a big band musician. And that was a big influence to me as a teenager. But I already, my aunt... This is a true story. I was five or six. I came to my grandmother's house in the front of the, my grandparents' house. There was a band playing, which was my aunt and her new husband. And I saw them playing. And right then, I knew that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to be a musician. And, wow, at uh, five. Yeah, five, I must have been five or six because my grandparents lived on I call it Seabright. I remember we called it the Seabright house. And uh, I remember walking up and they were set up with their little band in the front of the lawn. And her new husband and uh, it was my aunt and her and, and we I, I was just in awe i'm like i have to do this and so you want, I'll, I'll give you the corny part of my story so when i'm about 10 11 concert black sabbath i'm putting all the pieces yeah. of the puzzle together for you yeah, yeah. my but brother yeah. and i now, now we're now we're 12 or 13 and we're going to be musicians but we really don't play music not really uh, I played trumpet in elementary school. My brother played saxophone, but we weren't cool. You know, that's not cool. That's not going to get it. <laughs> we had a friend's dad who made stickers. She, her dad was, did um, some kind of advertising stuff and, and they could make stickers. And of course it isn't like today where we have a computer, your printer, and you can print off a sticker. So getting a sticker was a big deal. We came up with a fake band name and we figured out that if we just said we were in a band and handed out stickers, we one, people thought we were cool. And two, girls liked us yeah that was a big nice. deal that was yeah. a big deal and so here we are handing out stickers hey we're in a band here we're in a band I mean, and pretty soon people were like well where are you guys playing well uh -oh. now, we have, now, now we have to learn how to play so we were terrible and so you course, manifested we, a, a band life for yourself it, absolutely we, we had to because we were we were talking like we were we, we weren't we had stickers with our fake name yeah. of a band we thought it would make us cool but then we uh, had what was your thing. fake name do you remember uh, what was it let me think about it it was uh i want to say it was called crossfire <laughs> my brother's gonna laugh it was just something ridiculous something totally 80 ish uh 80 because it was the late 80s and uh it was just dumb and uh I love telling that story. Like, really, you play music because it's all in your heart, and you get like, no, we were just trying to get girls and hand out stickers, and then we had to learn to play because we were being knuckleheads. <laughs> so you could play the trumpet or the trombone, did you say? Trumpet, trumpet. I trumpet. played the trumpet. So what did you do then? What did you just go and get some lessons? I mean, it's not easy to just you can't just you know. Lessons. Again, we were we were pretty poor. You know what we. I, I, I took my trumpet and my brother took his saxophone to the pawn shop, you know, and we exchanged them for, for guitars uh -huh. so that we would have instruments. So, which really made my mom really mad because she had skimped and saved to buy us these instruments. And we just took it and that they even let us do it. Is it more amazing? Think about it. We're like 12 trading instruments. 
when you have beer, like, so you're okay. <laughs> yeah, we win it. And so, and the rest is kind of history. So we, we taught ourselves to play, you know, and, and then we had that guitar teacher, which was my brother's guitar teacher. I couldn't afford to go also. So he went, he he would go take lessons when he could gave up the money. And then he would show me and share his lesson with me so oh, that I wow. could, so that I, because we couldn't afford to both go. So he took the lesson with this guitar teacher who took us to the concert. Then he would come back and then he'd have the lesson written out. And then he would teach me the lesson that he took. Wow. And then and how, years how, later. How entrepreneurial of him. Did he charge you? <laughs> my brother? No. No, he didn't charge me. We just had this idea that we were going to be rock stars. And then, of course, the neighborhood kids joined in. And pretty soon somebody's playing drums and somebody's playing this. And, and you know. Uh, we had one we had one rich friend so we liked him because then he could get stuff like like a pa like because his his parents would actually buy him because we didn't have that kind of money <laughs> so we needed him in the joe we needed joey in the band you know we need joey in the band why did you know joey parents, was rich or did it, this well yeah because he, you know because he, he lived well one we lived in an apartment and he lived in a house and his wow. family had like an rv and you know motorcycle dirt bikes and all this stuff we had nothing you know we were just the poor kids that lived up around the other neighborhood so um, I'm still friends with that kid to this day. He's a, of course so we're, we're all grown men. We love Joey. We, we actually, love Joey. Joey, uh, Joey, Joey Anderson. Now a shout out to Joey, maker, isn't he? And shout out to Joey. Joey Anderson. We're still friends. We still. I, I'm, I'm also a motorcycle. I ride Harley's, so I ride big motorcycles. So Joey and I and my brother a couple years ago, again, this is knowing each other since we're 11, met up in Las Vegas to ride our motorcycles together because we hadn't seen each other in so many years. Oh, that's so so we still have a connection. So that's always fun. Yeah, so because I'm liking Joey because jo Joey was obviously clearly the game changer here. And oh, when did yeah. you find yeah. out that you could sing then? Because you've got an amazing voice. Oh, thank you so much. Say that again because I like my brother to hear that. Even though my brother and I are at this age, we're still laughing at each other. So my brother is an awesome, awesome singer. Like he's got that rock voice. Like he can do uh, Robert Plant and all the big rock voices. And he always was kind of the guy. And back in the day, I was kind of in the background just strumming guitar, or bass guitar, whatever needed to be played, I could play. I was kind of that guy that could play a lot of things. Um, but he sang a lot more. But when I went off to college, um, I always had wrote songs. <laughs> But they would only let me do one song in the band. I swear to goodness. In high school, we played every party every weekend. And I could play one song. They would let me do one of my original songs. And I could sing one song. And I'm like, I want to sing more. No, no, no. We're going to do this. And you just always write these songs. And, you know, you can do one. One You're the artsy guy. Go back to the back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, fast forward. When I got signed to my first record deal and, and I was older, I called my brother. And I'm like, ha! I can sing now. And you know what? I got a record deal. And I had to give him, give him some shit about it because I'm, I'm up in Seattle in college. And uh, and it was just, it changed. And, uh, you know, I just always loved singing. I, I think I got better with it with time. And um, I, I, I really liked the big old school voices. Like I like Frank Sinatra and Tony Bennett and some of that type of stuff. We talk about jazz or, or, or old standards. But those guys sang in a different kind of way. But I was always curious, how did they do that? And then as they got older, they could still do it. And they could sing, you know, like Tony Bennett sang until he was, you know, what, 95 or something? Mm -hmm. And these old school guys always had, but rock guys always seem to lose their voice. And I'm like, how are they doing it? I would ask, how do they do it? And it was, it was called, it's called natural voice or natural. There's, there's a technique of singing that you um, are not singing in a falsetto or a false type of singing. You're singing in your nat how you talk is how you sing and how you sing is how you talk. And, and there's a way of breathing and blah, blah, blah. And I thought, oh, I found it so interesting. So as I got into it more and more, I, I just kind of followed up on it. And, and it wasn't really that someone taught me to sing. I learned how Show me the technique. I'm a quick study. Give me the book. I'll read it. And if I read the book, I'll know how to do it. I'm just one of those kind of people. And um, and I did the homework a little bit after I started to get more involved in it. And it just got better and bigger. And pretty soon, it's just a natural thing that I I can sing very loud. Like, I can be 10 feet off a microphone sometimes because I know if I'm on top of it, like in a nightclub, oh, I'll just tear people's heads off. You know, it's just, it, but I know that. So, you know, I can I can uh, adjust stand, accordingly. Stand back, stand back, <laughs> Al. Because like, we've all been to those night, night, We've all been to those nightclubs where the music's just tearing your head off. You're yeah. like, why is it so? Why doesn't this person know? And so the dynamics, you know, that's that's a learned uh, thing, and it yeah, comes you come with out and you literally can't hear a thing, and you're like, what's going on in the world? <laughs> oh 
Oh, I agree. You know, uh, you know, we played like we played the 100 club, and which is awesome because you know it's legendary. I'm like, oh my goodness, I'm gonna play the 100 club. I can't believe it. Everybody's famous has played there, but it's a super loud nightclub. I'm sure you have you been there, yeah, and seen chef. You know, because it's downstairs and the low ceilings, and, and you know when Those you go sticks. in there, I was like, oh wow, this is gonna be so loud in here. I'm like, and I tell the sound guy, I'm like. I, I don't need that much of my monitors because I can hear the mains in here really good. <laughs> Cause the low set. But what what an, what what a great experience. The one you guys are you guys have the one we have the whiskey a go-go in Hollywood, which is yes. equivalent to the one hundred, and you guys got the one hundred club. So I played both, so I feel pretty cool. <laughs> well, I came out to LA um just before COVID. And okay. we didn't get to do, we brought the kids, so we didn't get to do all of that stuff. But we're coming back in November. So, yeah. Well, we'll call be me doing up. all of that stuff. You go to shows. Maybe I'll, we'll talk to Jim. We'll come down. And yeah. I, LA is, is, LA is about a thousand, well, it's 800 miles from where I am. Mm. But it's a, just a flight. for. It's like you guys going to Spain. It's just like a quick little yeah. flight. So whereabouts there are you? in? So you're in Washington, Vancouver, so, Washington. Right. So if you think of... Do you know where, so you know where Oregon State is. So you got yeah. California, then Oregon, and Portland, Oregon is at the farthest north end. Mm -hmm. There's there's a large river that divides the two states, Oregon to Washington State. So once you just go from Portland, Oregon, and cross over the river, that's where I live. That's where I am right now. But you so said I live in downtown. Yeah, you said your ancestry is Mexican. I am. I'm first generation. So my mom and dad were born in Mexico. Although I don't know my real dad, um, I, I and uh, but you know I, my whole family. So all of us cousins my age, we were the first generation born in this country. Mm -hmm. So, but you know it's funny in California. There's we call ourselves Chicanos. You know we're Chicanos, and we're just Mexican Americans. And um, it's it was a it, that era was really about being Americanized. Like I don't speak Spanish very well. I definitely can't sing in Spanish. I read it for terribly. And um, it was really about being Americanized. Now I wish I was better at it because I sing. I wish I could sing in Spanish because it would be awesome. And But I can't. I, I, I'm very, no, I'm very average. I'm a, I, I, they call it Spanglish. If you're from California, it's half English and half Spanish. And it's, it goes on all the time. And so Mexican-Americans speak that way. And so it's a very half, it's a very poor version of speaking Spanish or Mexican, if you will. Um, so sometimes I was talking to somebody from Spain and they're talking to me they're like, you speak terrible Spanish. I'm like, I know, because like California, we break it into two. It's half English and half, it's Spanglish. It's a whole different kind of dialogue. It's, it's a terrible. So when you go to other Latin countries, I suck. Because <laughs> they look Don't straight worry. at me and like, you look brown, you look like you're going to talk Spanish, and then you don't, and you do it like a white person. You sound funny. And they, and they tell you, you know, there, there's actually an insult, and I, 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 I won't say what it is, but there's a way that a traditional person from Mexico, like when they meet me, because I look so Mexican, they will, um, under their breath, it, it's, it's, I shouldn't even say it. I won't say, say it. it. But anyway, say there's it. a term. There's a term for it. And, yeah. and when they say it, you people know they're Google really, it. <laughs> they, they, they're really insulting you. They're really insulting. Yeah. If you hear that, people, you can Google it and you can know that <laughs> I they're won't insulting say it. you. I won't even no, say, it. Don't it's, say it. It's, it's dumb. It's terrible. a bit anyway, like the English uh, and the French. Yeah. Yeah. You we know. have a similar kind of relationship. <laughs> so do you have a desire to go back and like explore your heritage now? Because you're only one um, generation. Of course. You know, I am pretty proud. Um, Mexican American. Uh, I'm, I'm first generation. You know, culturally, I've spent time in Mexico. You know, as a young child, I I, I would go there. I, I've seen really. I'm going to say a name, and you might not know who this person. He's passed now, but Fernando Vicente was like an icon to the Mexican culture. He was from Mexico, and he, he would be the Mexican Elvis, if you will. And he's he's re recently passed, and he was just huge. Like, and, and I had seen him in Mexico in concert with my uncles. Because they were they were from Mexico and they were like you've got to go see the guy you play music I'm like I just never seen nothing like it and um, it was very traditional Mexican music and uh, I love it I, I love the culture I go to Mex I've been everywhere in Mexico and on vacation and of course as a child 
we would go to border towns from LA. Just it's not very far to go to the border towns, and my grandparents would take me over. So I, I spent a lot of time with it. And of course, I'm very proud of my culture. Um, I'm an American, but I'm definitely a Mexican American, and I am very much first generation. And and and, and my kids, uh, you know, we're very proud of our our culture, um, but we're very aware that we're Americans. We're we're not um, trying to make. There's a really misconception. You talk about being in in Europe and. and, and here, if you're Mexican, you know, people think you're a migrant worker, or, you know, farm workers or or you're out doing construction. And, and all those things are true. And they're a very vital part of our, our community and our ancestry. And um, I'm very, again, I'm proud of it. I, I've worked at construction most of my life um, and, I, and I have a construction business and all that kind of things. And I have people that work for me, but um, it, it's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. We have a lot of different, you have a lot of cultures there. I, that's one thing I didn't know. Mm-hmm. You know, I, when I came to the UK, I was, uh, you know, South Africans and um, um, different people from um, Jamaica, just lots of cultures. And I spent some time in Brixton and I, I it was multicultural and I, I loved it. There were some great food and great people out there. Really, yeah, really I, had a good time. The UK is incredibly multicultural. I grew up in South London and it's incredibly multicultural. Very similar, like, you know, like the US, a very big melting pot. Mm-hmm. So you mentioned your children. Are they into music? Are they musicians? What's that? You mentioned well, your okay, children. so I have, I have two daughters. My oldest daughter is, is, is a fantastic singer and can play guitar and ukulele. Natural right into it no problem in fact when she was young and a teenager I, I i got divorced when i was young and i've only been married once and i've been single for a lot of years hi everybody Just <laughs> um and uh this is not bumble and my daughter <laughs> uh, is, this, is this bumble i'm joking this and um bumble. Okay. my daughter uh so as it's you know when i was uh, i was single I always had my daughters every other weekend and all every Wednesday, you know, the whole thing when you're separate, when, when you're divorced. But my daughter was just natural to always be. I taught her how to sing at a very young age. But my 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 younger daughter is not a natural to it. She wants it so bad and just not a natural to it. And my older daughter just took it for granted. She loves singing. And, and then um it was so she I take her to nightclubs to sing with me when she was like a teenager. And my ex-wife would call me like on Monday. She's like, Did you're did you take our daughter into a nightclub somewhere singing with you at night, all night? I'm like, no. She goes, yes, you did. She showed me pictures, and you did take her into a nightclub, and so I'd sneak her in. And so by the time she turned 21, it was, she had ridden into all the clubs and played a lot of clubs with me. And, um, and and pretty soon she was actually part of my band. For Now she has two children, so she doesn't come out as as because she's raising a young family. But uh, she used to come out and do a lot of shows with me. She's a great singer, and it was always fun. And to have her on stage, you know, it would be my brother and then me and then, of course, my daughter. And so there was all of us on stage together. I was uh, a lot of fun to do that. And she's a fantastic singer. Uh, but, you know, she's being a mommy now. So she's changed, switched gears. I love that. I love the fact that it's so, you know, and that's very cultural, isn't it, from, you know, your heritage, that it's a very big family thing. The big, you know family Absolutely. business. You know what? It, it absolutely, even in my construction business, you know, my, my younger daughter runs my office. You know, I work with uh, people that are in my family. Um, my, my son-in-law worked for me for a long time. Now he owns his own company. But, you know, we are very close as family members. You know, we do music together and business together. And it's it's a big part of who we are. And um, in fact, somebody asked me recently, they said, it's so interesting. You're so close to your daughters and everyone's always around you. And I'm like, well, that's your family. <laughs> that's yeah. how it's supposed to be. I think that's how it's supposed to be. Yeah. You know, it seems normal to you, but uh, I mean, a lot of people will be really like, um, yeah, thinking how wonderful that is and how amazing and how lucky you are. Yeah. Well, when I come to London for a, t- a fall uh, tour, uh, I'm sure my daughters will come this time. They almost came this last tour, but they are both saying, we're coming next time. We're going to come. And and if, and if my older daughter comes, she'll absolutely come on stage with me. And she won't, she'll, she'll be up there for sure. That's so she's cool. got that Perez attitude, I call it. She'll, she's a ham. She'll be up there. There's no way she's coming to London with me playing shows and not getting on stage. She'll, <laughs> she'll be up there. Well, I can't wait. <laughs> I am very excited. Thank you so much. As- fascinating fascinating story really encouraging as well a really encouraging story to others who want to emulate what you've done and want to you know pursue a career in in music as well that you know you can do it you just have to you've got to be savvy haven't you and you've got to be determined well there's two things about music yes it's art 
absolutely it's always art it's art like painting a picture art or writing a novel art it is art but there is a part of it that is absolutely the business it's a music business and and to take it serious and get to the next level you have to take that part of it serious and and, and recognize there's some investment and there's some things sacrifices <laughs> yeah. what is your favorite song do you, do you like the album you, you said you listened to it what is your favorite yeah song no there? i love it i don't ask me to name a song okay okay well <laughs> I'm going to say the new album. So the music video is Woman Powers. That's got a lot of airplay and we will, I, I like it. Um, Let the Player Play was the first single off it. Uh, um, there's a song called Revolution that, that, that they've been pushing quite a bit. But we're going to shoot a new music video, video uh, next week for a song that I wrote called Shirley Sweet. So look for a video. What I loved, out, what I have um, to say, what I loved Shirley about Sweet. it. And we're going to shoot it. What I loved about it is it, it, you, you really, you know, embrace the female. You really embrace the feminine. And I really love that. You know what? You're not the first one to say that to me, but I think being raised by a single strong woman and then um, having daughters and raising daughters um, that I really wanted them to have that sense. And I think, I think the, the song I wrote called Woman Power is kind of embraces that I believe um, women are the backbone to most of what goes on and, and people don't really see that. And I see it maybe because I, I, I identify because of my mother and a strong grandmother. And of course, now I have these strong daughters that are really super intelligent, successful women. And now they're raising kids and they have female, I have granddaughters and, and they're being taught that same um, idealistic thing that, you know, women it's possible. It's everything. They, they they don't need to be a man to do it. You can do it. Do it. And, uh, and just have to be a human, don't you? you? Just have to be a human. You know what? That's what I Thank loved you. from your album. It's like you know, you really do embrace the feminine, and you can see you're celebrating that energy. Yes. And I was like, oh, I love this. This is really cool. In Love Revolution, that song, and I'll say something. I'll let it. I know you got to go. Love Revolution was really about celebrating love. Love who you love. It doesn't matter what that means to you whatever that means to you do that but the one thing is i really intentionally wrote that song to say it's not that we're complicating it just be a good human being and love who you love and try to love everybody if you can and i'm not some optimistic skipping down the road you know <laughs> guy but i i try to be you know because it's easy to fall into all the things we see going on in the world. And if we just remember to just be a good human being, be happy and love everybody and let everybody love whoever and however they want to love. It's fine. It's not that big a deal. Such, a lovely way. <laughs> Such an amazing way to end our chat because I, you know, I'm completely on the same page as you just let live and let live. You know, Absolutely. let's just go back to live and let live, you know, stop judging everybody and just mind your, everyone mind your own rise business. up. Whoever wants yeah. to rise up, rise up, you know, be, be who you want to be. Absolutely. Be who I, you want to be and embrace it. I think, um, you know, I was going to round off with the thing that you just said about the business. I mean, it doesn't matter what genre of art you do, whether it's music, whether it's the visual arts, whether it's the performing arts, there is compromise and there are decisions to be made. And if you want to get somewhere, yeah, there's a lot of work you've got to put in. You can't. It's a lot of work. You can't just, there's no quick magic pill. You, it takes, like, you know, we're not youngsters, but yeah. I have to put it out there. But we can look back now and we can see where we came from. And you go, oh, okay, yeah. yeah, I put in the legwork and now this is where I am. And that's, you know, that's good. It's a good example to show. If you Absolutely. try, if you put in the work, you will get there. And people recognize it. And that's, I'll leave it with that too, is that when you get, a publishing deal for a book or a record deal for a recording or you're a performing artist like we talk about dance uh, companies and I, and I love the performing arts by the way um, people see you put that work in they'll vest into you because they see how hard you're working and I tell these young kids all the time work as hard as you can it's taken me a lifetime to be where I am today and I finally can say I am really enjoying it more than I've ever enjoyed it in my entire life so that's the truth we are having fun now, but we earned <laughs> the right to do that by Absolutely. putting in those years and your tens, 20 years of like showing up. Absolutely. Showing yeah, up and taking action. And I can't wait to meet you face to face 
with my posse and your posse. And I like it. I will see you in London, if not in LA. And thank you so much for just chatting to me. You are an, a fascinating guy with who makes amazing music. Thank you, Al. It's been brilliant. Thank you so much for taking time. I appreciate it. And hit me up for that dinner. I'm always good. I for will. Food. Oh, don't you worry. I've read it in my book. <laughs> <laughs> Take care. Have a good night. Bye-bye.